I cannot end tonight's show without talking about a particular story from India, the encounter of Vikas Dubey, a gangster who was shot this morning. India cannot seem to get enough of this case, but before I tell you about it, I want you to take a look at this. <laughs> This video is from yesterday, moments after Vikas Dubey was arrested at a temple in Ujjain. Did you notice his tone? I am Vikas Dubey, he tells the cops as if warning them of the consequences of arresting him. There were cameras present and he knew that. Perhaps he was making sure that they cannot build a case of mistaken identity against him. There were 62, 62, 62 criminal cases against this man. Five murders, eight attempts to murder. An arrest in such a case spells a lifetime in prison, if not a death sentence. But he did not look particularly scared. Perhaps he knew that he could get out. Let me tell you a little more about Vikas Dubey. He was from a village near Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh. A gangster for more than 30 years, he dealt in real estate. He won district level elections in the year 2000. He enjoyed immense political patronage. He's been linked to various parties, including the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Samajwadi Party in UP. The chase for Vikas Dubey began after his men ambushed eight cops who had gone to arrest him. There was a call to bring him to justice, but it's not that simple. And allow me to tell you why. Arresting this man would have opened a Pandora's box. He could out the secrets of political leaders, those who allegedly supported him. He could reveal some uncomfortable truths during interrogation. He could dent political careers. Then there's also the question of how long one would, one would have had to wait to bring Dubey to justice. Let me give you a broad idea of the number of pending cases in India. 3.14 crore in district courts, 47 lakh in various high courts, nearly 60,000 in the apex court. Those who knew the system in India said that Dubey's encounter was imminent. An encounter solves the problem of outing leaders. It also silences the public that's been asking for justice. The only surprise was the timing of this one. No one expected the cops to close this chapter this quick. Many Indians celebrated Vikas Dubey's death nonetheless. And this is a deja vu moment. It reminds one of what happened in Hyderabad in December 2019 after four alleged accused in the gang rape and murder of a woman doctor were killed in an encounter. The country was divided. Some clicked selfies with the bodies. Others called the encounter a cover-up. Some questioned if the police were trying to hide something. And some people said that we cannot take justice in our hands. They're right. We shouldn't. We cannot. But nothing's changed in the last eight months. And nothing will change unless we address the root cause of why encounters are glorified in this country. So here's my biggest takeaway from the Vikas Dubey encounter. This gangster's case is a commentary on the Indian legal justice system and how it has molded people's attitude towards encounters. They would rather have Vikas Dubey dead than wait for God knows how many years for him to be convicted by a court. FYI, India's conviction rate is 48.8%. And this is according to 2017 numbers. The long stretch trials and the sliding conviction rate are often used as an excuse for taking law into one's own hands. In this process, we lose out on the bigger story. One alleged criminal is dead, but the larger nexus is alive. The politicians who allegedly gave patronage to Vikas Dubey, who were in cahoots with this gangster, are roaming scot-free. And there is nothing that will stop the rise of another Vikas Dubey. This is no evil prophecy. This is India's bitter truth.